tonight as the Israeli Defense Forces push deeper into southern Gaza, Israeli officials are warning that the war against Hamas could continue well into the new year. It also comes as new video purportedly shows at least two Palestinian children stripped and held at gunpoint by the IDF in Gaza. CNN has obtained the footage, but I want to warn you, it is graphic. Let's go to CNN's Will Ripley, who's in Tel Aviv for us. Will? Hi, Abby. We still have a lot of questions tonight about this video that has emerged. Uh, appears to show Palestinian men and at least two children in a stadium in Gaza being stripped to their underwear uh, and detained by Israel Defense Force soldiers. Now, uh, we have geolocated the video. We know where it was taken, but we cannot independently verify when this actually happened. It was posted on Christmas Eve. Uh, in the past, Israel has said that the reason why they strip people down is to check them for explosives. Uh, and even, Israel says, within the last week or so, as they were going house to house in Gaza, they did find a stash of weapons, including explosive vests that Israel says were modified for children to wear. But we're still asking questions about uh, exactly what the circumstances are uh, with this video that shows these children. Uh, but there's a lot of other horrific video coming out of Gaza, uh, including southern Gaza, where there were smoke plumes rising uh, from yet another airstrike near a hospital that the Hamas-controlled health ministry says killed at least 20 people. Uh, the images are just horrific, and doctors, um, international surgeons who are on the ground in Gaza uh, are saying that these, these handful of hospitals that are still barely functional, barely operating, don't have basic medical supplies. They just don't have enough uh, to be able to treat the huge influx of, of injured patients. Um, we can't independently verify the numbers from the Hamas-controlled health ministry. They say that more than 21,000 people have died, a staggering more than 55,000 people injured, and some of those patients, doctors warn, are actually dying as they wait to receive urgent care. The scenes of devastation, of heartbreak, are just a lot uh, to take in, but we did also see some signs of hope at one of the schools where families are sheltering. Uh, there was a teacher, a displaced teacher, who was teaching impromptu classes for these young students, trying to give them at least some semblance of a normal life, even though they're surrounded by so much death and destruction, Abby. Will Ripley, thank you for all of that. And let's bring in now CNN military analyst and retired Air Force Colonel Cedric Layton. Uh, Colonel Layton, Israel's military chief is now saying that the war in Gaza could last many more months from this point. If that is true, what does that look like? Yeah, that's a really great question, Abby. So let's first take a look at the ground operations that Israel has uh, conducted here so far. Uh, so this area in light blue is basically where they've cleared all the area in northern Gaza, almost all of it. Their furthest points of advance are in darker blue. They've also been active in the south central part and in the extreme southern part, including at the border crossings right here. So as far as how this looks, well, uh, this is one of those areas where, as Will described in his report, there is a lot of destruction in Gaza. And when you look at what has happened so far, you can kind of extrapolate from that as to how far this is going to go if Israel continues with these kinds of operations. So this is the kind of thing that we can expect to happen even more throughout all of Gaza. One of the main objectives here for the Israeli government is eliminating Hamas. There are questions being raised about whether that's possible. Are they capable, even with all this bombardment, senior leaders of Hamas, they're still alive. Are they capable of actually eliminating this entity? Well, I think the short answer to that, Abby, is really no. I mean, when you see the different areas in which uh, in which they've been operating, uh, it really is very hard for them to completely eliminate every single aspect of Hamas. We have to remember Hamas is an ideology. Uh, they are really funded in many parts uh, through all kinds of uh, different fronts and as part of a larger process throughout the Middle East, they are going to be part of this effort uh, that is in many ways bankrolled by Iran. But this ideology is something that is not going away. Even if Israel were to be able to eliminate the heads of Hamas, eliminate all the uh, subdivisions and all the other aspects of that, they're going to have a really difficult time getting rid of the ideology. And that is, I think, the biggest problem that they have in realizing that particular operational objective that they have. Yeah. I mean, what about other groups like Hezbollah? I mean, are, are, is this war, as devastating as it's been for the people of Gaza, is it a deterrent or 
Is it simply incentivizing more groups and even individuals to launch more attacks? Well, I'm unfortunately going to say that I think it incentivizes a lot of these groups, Abby. When you look at all the different groups that are active here, not only do you have Hamas, but you have the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. They're active both in Gaza and in the West Bank. Of course, we've already talked about Hezbollah, uh, very active in southern Lebanon. You have different militia groups uh, within Iraq uh, and in Syria, uh, plus places like Bahrain. And of course, down south in Yemen, you have the Houthis. Uh, so all of these these groups are looking at this as a possible opportunity in order to attack not only Israel, uh, but also the U.S. And they see the kinds of things that we're doing uh, in the Middle East as basically being part of a bigger effort that unites the U.S. and Israel. Uh, that may not be completely true in reality, but that's how it's perceived in the Arab world. And all of these groups are seeking to take advantage of what's going on in Gaza right now. Colonel Cedric Layton, thank you as always for your expertise on all of this.